Hello again. So far we've been talking about using other people's copyright work. So it's about time we start talking about your own work, how to protect it and how to use it. Now, I say your own work, but is it really? That's the first thing we need to figure out. Who owns the copyright to your work and what does that mean for your ability to share it and reuse it? So if you work at Cambridge, there is a good policy and actually the copyright um, creators rights are very well protected. It means that in most cases, you will hold a copyright of any work you produce in the course of research, articles, data, other documents. There's a few cases where that's not true. For example, pre-existing conditions, such as if you have an industrial sponsor and uh, their contract says that um, they will own the copyright or all the IP. So check any other contracts you might have. Um, or where work is created for administrative or managerial reasons within the university. And that's the case, for example, for exam papers, um, library catalogues, minutes, and so on. But in most cases, you start off owning the copyright of your work. However, when you go to publish it, particularly if we're talking about journal articles, you will usually be asked to sign a copyright transfer agreement. That means that you are giving your copyright to the publisher in exchange for all their services of organizing the review, publishing and promoting the work. Of course, you still own the moral rights, so you still have the right to be credited as the author and object to um, detrimental treatment, but they own the economic rights, like the right to make a copy and distribute it. So this means that in many ways, the work has become third party material for you. And the same restrictions I spoke about in the last video apply. You wouldn't be able to share it or distribute it or alter it and republish it. So it's worth thinking about this and perhaps considering negotiating with the publishers at the time of the contract. So wait until they accept your work, um, but before they sign the copyright transfer agreement, you're free to ask a few questions. Not all publishers will be open to this. Some of them might say no, but then what have you got to lose? If they say no, then maybe that doesn't matter. So think, for example, if your funder has special requirements, if you're funded by the research councils in the UK, for instance, they say that an, a copy of the article needs to be available online, free to download within a certain time period, say a year or two years. Now, we know that some publishers, at least, can be flexible with this. So a publisher that would normally require a two year embargo before a free copy can be put online with open access might be willing to reduce that to one year if the funder requires it. So make sure you ask them. Similarly, some funders require the authors to retain copyright, such as the Wellcome Trust. So if you're aware of this, it's important that you mention it to your publisher and see whether you can come to a compromise. And um, it might be that you are happy to give the copyright to the publisher, but there are certain things you want to do with the work. For example, you know you're teaching a course and it would be useful to share this particular article with students, then it might be possible to have within the contract a license that says the author retains the right to do this. It might already be there, but if it's not, you can ask them whether they can add it. Um, or you might want to reuse a figure uh, in your thesis, for example. Again, it might be possible to bring in a license that enables you to do just that. There are uh, things called addenda, which can be um, appended to your contract to ask for specific things. And I'll include some links under this video with some examples of how to do that. Once you have signed a copyright transfer agreement, it's important that you keep it safe somewhere and that you're aware of exactly what you can and can't do. One area I want to highlight because um, researchers often fall uh, foul of this is sharing online. For example, on ResearchGate, academia.eu, and other more general social media like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. You are typically not permitted to share the version of record. If the publisher holds the copyright, then you are certainly not uh, permitted to make a copy and distribute it this way. And there have been cases where publishers have issued takedown notices to authors for sharing their articles on ResearchGate. So it's better really to link either to Apollo or another repository, um, where there will be a, a version of your article. If you're interested in finding out more, go back to the module on publishing in journals and the section on open access. I will tell you a little bit more about what that means and what you can and can't do, but our team is there to help. 
Um, or you could link to the publisher site. There'll be, of course, the version of records, so fully legal. Uh, do bear in mind, though, that uh, some of the people who find the link might not subscribe to that journal, so hit a paywall and they may not be able to read the article. It is always permissible, by the way, to send um, a copy to somebody for private study um, through your own email address. So a single copy exchange is fine. So now we've talked about all the restrictions and things that come with copyright. They can, of course, all be eliminated by using something called a Creative Commons license or other forms of open licenses. So that's what we're going to talk about next. I hope you can join us again next week. Um, but for now, bye-bye.